Good morning, everybody out there in the beautiful land of YouTube. It is a wonderful day here on the Gulf Coast. So if you watched my video a few weeks ago about how to flip pallets, you know those things, things are shipped on and the logistical pallets and how to make $1,000 a day by doing this. Well, some people didn't believe me. So you might be wondering, is $1,000 a day possible? It's $100 a day possible. Well, I would say yes, and here's a legit way to do it. So meet John. My name is John Wilker. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. And this is the guy that does it for like a really big scale. Like, I mean, this is the guy. Like, he knows everything about pallets. He is the original pallet guy. He is the guy that does this. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how he does it. So just follow me and we're gonna dive into this. This is his truck, okay? This is the truck that he does most of his moving with. I purposely don't want anything fancy, you know? I don't want, you know, just between you and I, I don't, I don't want people knowing what I'm making, you know? Just kind of give you an idea of my truck. It's, it's nothing special. It actually used to be a F-350. So think about that. He started from, with a truck at, that from an auction and he's still doing it with a truck from the auction. See, I've been enamored with these, these side hustles and these, these ways these entrepreneurs are able to make it. Even when you get a good man down, he comes out with an idea on the other end. And since we're in such a rough time with the pandemic and all that you know, hard times in the economy, if this helps just one person out there, maybe feed his kids or, or help with college tuition or just make rent, that's all that matters to me. So in this video, we're gonna talk a little more in depth about the pallet hustle, the pallet game, the pallet business, and how if you're out there looking for something new to do, this video is for you. Because remember, a closed mouth never gets fed. So you gotta go out there and you gotta make this happen. You can do this. We all have faith in you that you can do this if you're really trying to find something new. So I, I wanna be under the radar. And I don't want some snazzy looking truck uh, giving my business giving my business away. You know, well he's rolling in it, right? I don't want that to happen. So I just keep it like this. And something funny, uh, I broke uh, my window, old corner window. I keep it broken on purpose. You know, just give the air of I'm struggling. <laughs> so, um, it, 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 I like the 12, I've had 16 footers in the past. Heck, I've done it with a pickup truck and a trailer. Under the radar, it's really important. Let me tell you why, okay? Anytime your competition sees you starting to get ahead, they're going to mimic what you're doing. They're going to create comp competition for you. At the moment uh, the dump trailer hustle became big, everybody started getting dump trailers. Keep the scratches on your truck keep the glass broken and, and just keep moving with it here because your competition will steal your pallet yards. He bought this thing for 3,600 bucks years ago. Okay. You can't even get a dump trailer for that. Like Robert Biggerstaff's dump trailer was like 4,000 bucks, I think. And this is a truck with an engine and tires, flatbed. This, it can be done like government auctions, Facebook marketplace. You can do this. You can, you know, use a trailer if you have like an SUV or a truck, or you can rent a truck from Penske or Enterprise or Home Depot. Um, find somebody who has a truck, cut them in on the deal, or you can do brokering deals with brand new pallets or even refurbished pallets where you're not even delivering this stuff, this business glamorous either but all that that's money right and these were loaded onto my truck and i'm about to go down the street and sell them for a nice profit uh, these are going to run around six dollars a piece and uh do a couple more and make it a day so uh, you got if you get a truck guys and and, and run this business and actually do a point a to point b and combine it with brokering and combine it with all these other things that are coming into play the money's good because we're not trading time for money. We're trading units for money. Okay. There's a common denominator between these two businesses. And it's the one thing that touches 85% of all commerce and is absolutely massive. 
it's a call a wooden pallet. You know, the things they use to move around warehouses of heavy stuff or boxes or whatever. It's how everything is shipped in the, in the country. So just to give you a better idea, there's 2 billion of them in the United States circulating at any given time. At any given time. It's a lot of pallets. 60% of all lumber is either used to build pallets or to repair pallets. Okay, when you work, this supplier right here is a couple different businesses I, that I supply pallets to. And they're being loaded on. And I want to show you a couple of things about this as well that I want to point out. And I might have said this in other videos, but um, we got... Um, you see how we got mixed stuff here? There's mixed stuff here that's not all the same sizes. Well, knowing how to move this stuff without having to sort it and uh, taking it directly to the buyer and not having to repair it is a um, super efficient way uh, of, of working this business and what you need to know to make it happen. Think about it. Everything in your house behind you, in this, uh, this room or where you are, this desk, fan, the wallboard the house was built with, the roof, the lamps, the keyboards over there, the chair, everything is moved on these pallets. Okay, so I want to caveat on the rent-a-truck, okay? So you're going to see later in this video, you know, kind of the idea concept of, of this business. And you might be saying, well, I don't have a truck. I don't have a trailer. I don't have the things that I need to, to get started. Well, you can rent one. So the idea is you're gonna schedule these, these pickups all on the same day, a Monday, a Wednesday, a Friday, to where you can rent a, a pickup truck, a, a trailer, whatever, get them all done in one day. You're gonna take a little hit up front, but you're still gonna be get, making money. Like Even though you're not making a ton of money because you gotta rent a truck, it's not yours, you can rent one and still make good money. So my, if you're making, $500 a day instead of a thousand, you're still making money and you're getting started. So don't be afraid to rent a truck, just schedule your pickups better. I could literally do 20, 30, 40 loads out of here, you know, uh, with what's what's laying in, in this particular business. And uh, there's a multitude of other ones as well. Um, and they're the same everywhere. So there's a misconception that I'm sending people to behind the strip mall and the grocery stores and stuff like that and that's not the case these are businesses that actually generate tons of this stuff so uh here's the load i'm about to deliver i'm going directly back two blocks away from where i started i'll start the video up and so i want to say this this can be done in a lot of different ways it can be done with pallets it can be done with 55 gallon drums it can be done with dunnage it can be done with cordage it can be done with spools you know the big things cables can rolled up in because Everything that goes to and from has to arrive either on a logistics pallet or on a spool or in a barrel. So you're going to be brokering these products back and forth. And he's going to explain that here in just a second. I explained it a lot in the first video, so if you haven't seen that one, watch it here. He's going to explain this to you again. I'm trying to uh, introduce a broad concept to you that there is money laying around everywhere. And I noticed this a lot the other day when I was walking through Lowe's and now I notice a lot of things like what things are sitting on and how they came into the building and what they're wrapped in because there's money laying around everywhere. And the trick to making money is you find a problem and you help solve some and you help solve that problem to somebody that has money. You know, you're creating value in the form of problem solving. And in this case, pallets come in, they've got nowhere to go, and pallets need to go out. Somebody else needs them to make stuff go out. And that is the business model of this. There's every day, truckload after truckload after truckload of inventory is coming into their business. And they take that inventory and they shelve it and they're shipping it out by FedEx, they're shipping it out the hand truck, this, that, and the other. And then there's a whole other half of businesses out there that need to ship their stuff out day after day. And drums and dunnage and all this other stuff that comes into play as well for multiple revenue streams. So I wake up early, I'm 55. I, I 
driving my truck, which I keep at my at customers, and you don't even need a truck to do this. You can get one. You can rent one. You can partner with somebody who has one. You need a trailer. You can stack up several door, door orders in the morning and, and rent a truck and have plenty of money left over to, for the rental. Or, and I'm talking, I'm not talking about a CDL truck or a semi truck. I'm more, there's brokering as well. Whereas passive income, if you want to work at just a passive income where you're the middleman, you don't even need a truck. So get that out of the way. Second thing I want to get out of the way before I go further, I don't live any of this stuff. So I get up, 6, 6.30, whatever, head out, go to my truck. I drive a block and a half to my first supplier of pallets. Pull in. Forklift driver comes out, loads my truck with 120 pallets. They gave him to me for free. For free. I get 95% of my, my pallets for free. Do a rental. Well, like one day a week even and do two or three loads. They don't know what to do with them. Because every day they're coming in and in and in and, and, and they just they want it off their plate. They don't want to have to come in on the weekend and take them to the dump and pay their guys overtime and miss the football game. It's just a pain in the butt for them as far as supply goes. So I am a service to the supplier and they are my warehouse. I don't, I don't need one. They warehouse it for me. Picking it up. Takes about 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes to have your truck loaded, strapped down, and pull out. Pull out. The way cities are constructed, these types of businesses that we're dealing with are clustered together. That's one thing to be cognitive about on uh, these pallet, the pallet game, is most of the distributors, the people that are using them, and the people that are buying them, and the people that are brokering them, they're all in the same district. You can use like a big business, business district. But if you look at town in itself, uh, you, everything's zoned to certain parts of the town. So a lot of the big businesses that use pallets and dunnage and crateage and cordage containers and barrels are all in a, in a rather close place. So like for him, where he's picking them up and dropping them off are, is pretty close together. He's developed relationships with these companies that is allowing him to do this. So I'm only going out the parking lot to the stop sign, take a left, go to the next side, stop sign, take a right, go a couple hundred yards, pull into my buyer. And the buyer, forklift driver, comes out, unloads my truck. So let's do the math here. 120 pallets, six bucks a piece. Got them for free. 30 minutes, 35 minutes. From pickup to delivery, I pulled in 720 bucks. So then I go back. In, some, in a couple of places, my supplier is loading like corrugated boxes onto my truck, and then I'm going to the next place and selling those for five bucks, four bucks a piece, or whatever. So buyers are sometimes suppliers for free other items as well. So I teach you how to do this the right way. And it's not just one style palette, it's a multitude of different styles. So you may have seen like these scavengers that, for lack of a better word, you know they they, they don't have any business sense. <laughs> they haven't bathed. You know they're not they're not very uh, business like. Uh, and that's my competition on one end. And then you have these pallet yards on the other end. I have eleven pallet yards in my in the city of Birmingham, and it didn't matter. Because I'm dealing, they're trying to go for Fortune 500 companies and businesses ordering a thousand a week or something like that. And if I can broker for that stuff with them and so much a cut. But regardless, if I'm a small business um, and I call up the pallet yard and, and I say I need 150 pallets, well, they're going to say we have a minimum order of 500. For, for medium, small business, regional business, that's, that's a hit. As far as one, I ain't got room for it. Two, they're going to be charging a premium price because of all their overhead, right? And, and you know, because the, the pallet yard's got buildings and salespeople and nail guns and forklifts and big trucks and you name it. So they got to charge a premium price. So that business owner on top of it has to pay that premium price on more than he even needs. And then, oh, the cherry on top, Mr. Business Owner, we charge $120 for a delivery fee. Not a good situation for him. So on the other side, we've got a supplier. A supplier, every day, truckload after truckload after truckload coming in. We have the byproduct of the pallets, also the crates and the drums, and there's stuff called dunnage, which are four by four, but uh, eight foot pieces of lumber that need to get rid of, and, and uh, wire spools, industrial bags, 
Gaylord boxes, uh, you name it. There's all different stuff that comes into play. They get gone. It's a byproduct. They don't need any more. They don't have to pay the dump fees. They don't have to fill up their dumpsters. But these scavengers that you see, well, they're going after one style pallet. When you go up to a supplier, a lot of times they have a lot of different styles. So the kicker to this is you got to know where to get these pallets, what to look for, what to look for in barrels, dunnage, uh, what to look for in any type of boxes or, or, or things like that, that you know what you can get money for. And everything is in his course if you want to take it. Um, you can figure this out on your own. It's probably going to take you a while, to be honest. Like, just like with YouTube, it took me a while to learn how to do all this. And if I could have asked an expert or a mentor up front, I would have done that. And it would have saved me years of heartache and misery. So everything you need to know is in his course. I took the course because I wanted the broad concept. I wanted to understand how his mind worked and how this idea worked because it might help me in the future. Because I believe that you should spend 1% to 3% of your income every year on personal development. That's just my opinion. And they need a guy who needs to know how to get rid of all of them, and that's us. And the only reason I know this is because I've been doing it for 22 years. And I want to teach you how to become that guy so you can become exclusive for that supply, for that money, stacks and stacks of money on their property, waiting for you to move on a consistent, reliable basis and take them to the buyers. So we don't trade time for money, trade units for money, and I want to teach you how to do it in quick fashion. And then it's recurring revenue week after week after week. But ever since I discovered it, since 1998, and I found out that you could get this stuff for free by the hundreds and thousands, it took me a while to get it right. And, and that's key, units for money, not time for money. Time for money is hard to scale. Units for money can be scaled, okay? You just gotta spread out. You can go from uh, finding, carrying and flipping these things to brokering, and he even talks about that too, where you're gonna be, you're the middleman for the guy transporting the pallets. The guy that actually is picking up the pallets and the guy that actually needs them, you insert yourself in there. So instead of being a, an A, B, you know, now it's, then it went to an A, B, C, and then now it's like A, B, C, and D, and you're in the middle. So you're just shaving a piece and you're sending the product along instead of actually out there, you know, moving these things. He doesn't even load these things on the truck. He gets the loaders to load them on the truck because you're solving a problem for them. They've got to get these things moving. I actually got to have a conversation with him on the phone the other day, and the, 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 this concept is mind blowing, how big this is. And the thing is, you might be saying, well, what about competition? Look, there's so many of these things that your competition is not even gonna be a thing. Like if you believe in the idea that the universe is vast and like there's always like, that things aren't finite, there's plenty of this out there. You just gotta go find it in your city. And he talks about how to do that crateage and cordage containers and barrels are all in a, in a rather close place. So like for him, where he's picking them up and dropping them off are, is pretty close together. He's developed relationships with these companies that is allowing him to do this. And you might be saying, well, this is only a man's thing. No, no. Here's a woman that does this just like he does and is one of his students. Good morning, my palette people. I just want to give you a quick update today. My first stop scouting this morning, this beautiful cold Monday morning here. I saw some pallets at a business when I was driving by last week, and I said I was going to come by today. I came by today, and lo and behold, the guy, Alan, told me that he's been calling the pallet company to come pick up their pallets for months, and they are not responding. So he is so happy that I came along. So as John said in the, um, the course, I'm going to rent a 26 footer because it's a lot of pallets. Um, and I said, well, you know, I'm trying to get the pallets for free. You know, I, I was always told that a closed mouth don't get fed. So if you want something, you got to ask for it. So he said, you know what? These are eyesore to me and I just really want them gone. So you can go ahead and take them. And when he said that, I tried not to jump out my pants. <laughs> oh man. So that's just, uh, that's my first stop for today. And I have about, 14 more stops to go. So she saw somebody in need, 
one of the distributors had failed to pick them up and she seized that opportunity because she had built relationships with the business owners. And that's key when you want to be Johnny on the spot. Speaking of Johnny on the spot, he watched this, some of my videos and started a tow truck company right here. Super proud of him and at the Navy Point boat ramp when the truck went down the boat ramp the other day. It's coming up in a vlog. He actually pulled him out. Super cool. All right. So if you're interested in learning more about this, like there is a lot to it. This is not just like, yeah, you can get started, but if you want to like make this a business, I link down below uh, his course, his class. And you know, one thing I learned with YouTube and real estate and everything is you don't know what you don't know. And what you don't know takes time to figure out, take, takes money to learn, fail and, and like things like that. I would have rather paid somebody to teach me how to do this before I spent four years learning how to do this. I took his course, like I was able to go through his course and it was mind blowing. Like once you, you gotta grasp the concept. He teaches you how to find leads. He teaches you how to um, find your yards. He teaches you what you need, the bookkeeping, things like that, behind the scenes stuff, how to hire help, how to insure yourself. Like, if you don't know how you can get in trouble in this business with forklift drops on your truck or you spilled these things going down the road, like these things like that can cost you way more money than a little course. And I believe that you should spend, you know, one to three percent of your salary every year for self-improvement. And that's what has helped me over the years, got me where I was, uh, where I am today. You, you, if, if there's something you can learn from this one nugget that will make you money, you do it. So check out the link below and uh, just see what he's got to say. Go check out his channel. I'm gonna link that below and you'll, you'll be mind blown how this spills into other areas like, uh, like drums and, and, and barrels and, and cordage spools and things like that, that whatever he's charging for this, you're gonna make back in a week. And <laughs> it's cheaper than going to college, okay? Like this will actually make you money tomorrow if you know what you're doing. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the like button because it helps for the algorithm as Graham Stephan would say. And I'm also a realtor. And if you're moving to Florida, hit me up. Emails in the description. And the way I say on this channel is if I can help one person, if it just resonates with one person, just like Johnny on the spot that started the tow truck business and now he had, he's his own boss, he's doing his own thing, doesn't have to listen to anybody and he's super motivated, being able to stand on your own two feet as a man or a woman, in my, in my opinion, is, it's priceless. So I hope you guys like this video. Comment down below, check out the course, and I'll see you on the next video. Felt super motivated to make this one. I know it's gonna change lives. We're gonna be back with another. I might do one on 55 gallon drums because I know a guy that makes like $1,000 a week doing that. And in spare time, it's wild. It's cash too. See you later.